Morning all. I uh, hope you're well. Over recent weeks, during our various series of lockdown thoughts, I have said on more than one occasion that numbers in the Bible fascinate me and probably merit a series of thoughts in their own right. I have resisted mainly because I don't know how interesting you would find it and also being a mathematician finding numbers generally quite interested wondered if I was just indulging in my own curiosity and pursuit. However when we study the Bible in its detail there is no escaping the fact that about one in every five verses within it contains a number. If we believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, then the numbers found within it must be no less significant than the God-breathed sentences that wrap around them. When the Apostle Peter writes to the dispersed people of God in his second letter, he says that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So whilst each book of the Bible may contain its own style and dynamic as a result of the 40 or so different authors that penned its words. The inspired source remains the same, the person of the Holy Spirit. And so we find a consistency from book to book, despite the 4,000 or so years that intervenes between the recording of its first phrase, in the beginning, in the first Old Testament book, Genesis, and the last phrase, Amen, in the 27th New Testament book, Revelation. I would suggest that as the Bible's words, themes, types, allegories maintain their consistent purpose, of bringing glory to our Creator God and His beloved Son Jesus and revealing that great story of redemption for mankind throughout the written page. Also, the numbers too point to an eternal, orderly design and not just random assigned integers, but also a stamp of divinity. Ultimately, I would say, don't just believe it because I say so, but find time yourself. And let's face it, we certainly seem to have more than we have ever had before during this resultant lockdown from this worldwide pandemic to search the pages of Scripture and note down its numbers and their usage. And I think you will be surprised, in fact, even amazed at not only their quantity, but their persistent use. Maybe like Isaiah, you will lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. So, as we take this approach, maybe we will become intrigued afresh with the word, the holy word of God, and not just see a number but a question deserving of an answer. Why the Lord, our God, the Lord is one? Why? He gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. Why? Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish. Why? Around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. Why? The sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethes Bethsaida, having five porches. Why? After six days, 
Jesus took Peter, James and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Why? The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Why? Did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. Why? On the fifth day present nine bulls. Why? He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Why? It is eleven days journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Why? The sons of Jacob were twelve. Why? Solomon took thirteen years to build his own house. Why? On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. Why? The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upwards and the mountains were covered. Why? Sixteen sockets of silver. Why? I bought the field from Hanamel, the son of my uncle, who was in Anathoth, and weighed out to him the money, seventeen shekels of silver. Why? There was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years. Why? When he gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants, nineteen men. Why? I have been in your house twenty years. Why? Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting. Why? They counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. Why? He had fasted forty days and forty nights. Why? He said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of fifty. Why? You shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all its inhabitants. Why? Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was sixty cubits. Why? The days of our lives are seventy years. Why? Jehu had appointed for himself eighty men. Why? The building that faced the separating your courtyard at its western end, its length, ninety cubits. Why? Having a hundred sheep. Why? Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, one hundred and fifty-three. Why? He took six hundred choice chariots. Why? His number is six hundred and sixty-six. Why? They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And this is just a few numbers mentioned. Intrigued? Maybe you are a bit more now than when we first begun. With the Lord's help, we will have a look at a few of these spirit-inspired numerals over the next two weeks and pray as we seek to discern their meaning that the Lord would bless our souls. But as we conclude today's introductory thought maybe it is sufficient to just rest in the wonderful assurance that the very hairs of your head are all numbered let's pray heavenly father again we thank you for this day we thank you for your word we thank you that it's full it's complete it's amazing nothing is there by happens chance but is inspired by a great and wonderful God 
who seeks to reveal himself and the character of his lovely son and the wonderful message of redemption to us. Lord, help us as we search these things to glean from its fruit and to learn something new. Again, Lord, as we remain in this lockdown and as things seem to get worse, we continue to pray. Help us, be with us, protect us, guard our loved ones and keep them safe, we pray. Because we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and enjoy your day.